about this song? It's just here and now. It's a love song. It has so many meanings to it, and it's just like for couples and just people in general. With, you know, feeling love, and that's what we need today. Yes, here and now. Okay. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. What is that? I don't know for sure. You need to find out. Okay. I've been trying. Tell us, uh, what's your favorite? Tragedies and good times and bad times. It's always a song. So whenever something happens in my life, I always say God and Lord. Um, my grandson, he was kind of skeptical of him being born and no miracles was out. And my daughter was in the hospital. So I had my headphones on and she was having a hard time. I gave him my headphones. No miracles. So the little miracle now he's 12 years old. <laughs> What's your favorite? Man, check every stay at home, man. She don't come out. House. He was happy. I said, I said, no problem now, man. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. 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 i am good 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 i
I just totally loved, you know, going over there and, and we met and we came up with an arrangement on how we would do the record and it would all work. Both of us were very happy and, and, that, and that was the beginning and now at the end of the first project, we are both satisfied that we did the right thing. And this new project, are you the writer of all your songs? Do you write all your lyrics? In the past, I have written virtually all of them. This project, I pulled together all different writers. I think I only wrote maybe two or two and a half of them this time. And because I wanted to hear, you know, I didn't want to only be known as somebody who could only sing his own songs. You know, not that anybody thought that anyway, but, but I wanted to gather you know, gather around stuff, you know. And now it's so different because I used to go in the studio at noon and come out at four in the morning and then go back in at noon and come out at five in the morning. You know, now I can go in, sing my song, put my coat back on, and go see The Mummy Returns with my friends. You know, so... <laughs> a life now. I have okay. a life. Okay. I didn't even know how to spell one before. Okay. So now, in essence, you can do, you can even do a little bit more shopping. Uh, yeah, but you know what? Somehow I managed to fit that in. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have a girlfriend who works at one of your favorite stores, Giorgio Armani, in New York. In New York? Oh, and, really? and I was visiting her in New York last year sometime, and she said you, and I was on my way to meet her, and she said, you just missed Luther. Oh, I saw he wouldn't have granted me an interview anyway, but at least I would have yeah. got a chance to see him. So how does it feel now that you can shop and you can go in the stores and say, I want this, that, and that? How does that feel? Well, it's incredible, because I used to always have to have all of my clothes made. And on one hand, it's nice to have things made for you. But on the other hand, you want to go and you want to shop where other men go and shop and, you know, just be around that whole festivity. If you miss, if that's something that you missed out on, and it's something that because of the weight problem I always missed out on. Now, I prefer not to have clothes made, unless it's for stage, but I, I prefer not to have clothes made. I prefer to go buy them in the store. You know. And as you can see with this gorgeous suit that he has on, this is reptile leather. What is this? Oh, this whole thing. This whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's alligator. Is that alligator? I don't, look, I don't even know my reptiles. I'm so excited sitting up here by Luther. I can't even get it right. Now, I remember you said Jack sampled. Got, got a mic here? J I was reading an article that said Janet Jackson sampled one of your, uh, oh, The Glow of Love or Change, which one was it? How did that come about? You know what? I heard that in the car uh, okay. for the first time, so I didn't know that it was going to happen until okay. I actually heard it. I heard it and I loved it. At first, for the first three seconds, I said, it sounds familiar, and then right away I knew what it was. And I started listening to it, and I loved it from the beginning. Because, well, you know Jimmy and Terry. You know they know how to do stuff, you know. <laughs> One of the great things about being Luther is that you've never been compared to anyone. Oh. Yeah, that, that's, that's actually a very important thing. It's one of the things I always, when, when asked uh, what, I, what I would like to say to new artists, the up-and-coming artists, you know, and what advice I would give them, that's the main thing. You have, to, you have to be unique. You have to not emulate anybody or any success that's already going on, you know. Where do you see yourself, say, 5, 10, 20 years from now? Oh, and by the way, uh, belated, happy birthday oh, to you. Thank you. I was listening to the interview with you and Troy, so happy birthday to you. But where do you see yourself in, say, 5, 10 years from now? 20 years from now? Well, 10 years from now, I see myself successfully executing more of the same. This is a chosen lifestyle. This is not anything I fell into serendipitously. You know, this is something that, that, that I wanted from the time I was 13 years old and saw Dionne Warwick in the Brooklyn Fox Theater, you know, I just said, I want that, I want that, I want that. And everything I did from then on, I wanted it, you know. And, and, you know, I went through school and I did school, but in my mind, I always wanted this, you know. And uh, I just, at one point, addressed that it was this or, I didn't, I didn't make a plan B, in other words, oh, really? for my life. No, because, you knew. I, well, n not only did I knew, but I was willing to accept the rejections that came along with it in the beginning hey, and everything, your you know. And I didn't want to have a plan B because that would make that me fall back on it, you know. Workshops. Well, thank you so much for your time and your patience. I, I sincerely appreciate it. And this is, is just an, a, a sample of what will happen when you follow your purpose and your passion in life. Thank you so much, Luke. Thank you. My pleasure. Much to thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Great. Can I get a hug? If you're involved in the producer's workshop, I get a chance to that on camera. I think you look good. Is it on? Is it on? And you look good too. Keep up the good work. You inspire me. <laughs> R&B workshop. My name is Karen McDaniel, and I came all the way from Harlem, New York, to um, just share my thoughts about Luther and sign his card um, as he leaves us here 
one earth. Um, one of my fondest men memories about Luther was uh, you could always see him walking down Madison Avenue around 65th Street. I used to work around in that area at uh, George Armani and we did service him at times. Uh, he, he just was a great person and a great spirit. Um, you could always find him walking down Madison and, and that's so uncommon for stars, you know. And he had he brought us so much joy in his music. One of my favorite songs was A House Is Not A Home. And I, I just hope to see Luther in heaven one day. You know, but um, I think people should just remember who he was and we need to be very grateful that he gave us so much of his spirit. And Luther, wherever you are, I wish you the best. It's Big Papa from WGCI, On Air Personality and Producer. And my fondest memory of Luther Vandross, oh man, I mean just his, his soulful sound, his voice, and his spirit. When you see him, when you, when you see him, you can tell he loved what he did. He was a, a pioneer, a genius. If it wasn't for him, a lot of R&B singers out today would not be out at all. And he was like, like my mother, that was like my mother's favorite artist, period, ever. I mean, I, I remember the first tickets I, when I first worked at radio, the first tickets I got, free tickets, I gave it to my mother, which was front row seats to see Luther. And my mother still adores that present. So uh, we, we still love him. He's still here with his music. His legacy lives on. Um, a house is not a house. That is <coughs> you know, I didn't even buy, I didn't even buy urban music. But when Luther came out with that, Lord have mercy, I went and bought the record. It was a record when it came out. Yes, I have the LP at my address. And we'll just miss him. He's, he's like an institution. Luther will not die. He won't die. We just won't see him. Hi, I'm Rosemary Abercrombie, and I'm just... I'm just heartbroken because our beloved Luther Vandross is gone from our presence.